offensively, man, perhaps in the second half, it was a bit of a struggle. What did you see overall in, on that end of the floor? Uh, <laughs> 50 points in the first half. Um, you know, when, when you don't generate anything off uh, your defense, offense can become a struggle for any team. Uh, and I think when you want to start comparing when we win a game and lose a game, our activity on defense and our disruption is a big difference maker. Uh, do you put that down to what Melbourne was doing? Is it, how do you diagnose where that um, effort is, I guess, defensively? Yeah, like it, it's, uh, I addressed this after the last game, like uh, we have great patches, like we come out in the third quarter, motivated, together, connected, uh, and we were very disruptive. Um, you know, we we need to evolve and have greater stretches of that. Um, you know, so that that's our our offense is generated from our defense, and we haven't been able to do that over the last couple of games. Uh, Jesse, how, how do you see that? What, what John's talking about in terms of the the patches, I guess that um, you might feel like you're playing in at the moment. Yeah, for sure, he's not wrong. I think it's pretty clear. We have patches where I think we look really good, and then we have patches where we look abysmal. Um, and that's the game, and it's a game of runs, obviously, but um, we've got to find a way to minimise the lows and, and um, push those stretches out a bit longer, the, the highs. Just with the rotation, this is a bit of a niche one, but just yeah, in the first two minutes, you made a couple of changes. Was that anything that you saw there in the first couple of minutes that you didn't like? I think Blanchfield came out about 90 seconds into the game and there was another one. No, uh, Blanchfield uh, asked to come out of the game okay. because he took, like, a knock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It just only seemed a, bit, a little bit dizzy at the start, but obviously he, he obviously recovered and played pretty good role. But yeah, yeah. What was the sort of issue there? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. They yeah. just tell me when I can put him back yeah. in the game, and you saw he went back in the game and yeah. played pretty well. Mm. Yeah. I just um, points to the paint was obviously a yep. big issue for you guys. What did you sort of put that down to? Yeah, like uh, what they do a good job of is they run the little false motion, stretch you out to use their athleticism and their driving ability and. And we, like an accordion, we went with them instead of staying in the gaps, you know. So, uh, you know, Tucker was getting downhill, XRM getting downhill. So Brad Newley, first quarter getting downhill. So, uh, you know, it's tough to defend a straight line drive. I guess um, for the first time I think in four years, it's four losses in a row for the club. It's, um, it was a bit of a rut. I had you sort of... I guess you just have to sort of work out to get yourself out of it. Yeah, absolutely. The the good thing about it is we get Tasmania coming into our place on Thursday, so we can lick our wounds for a minimal amount of time and get after it again. I think you've, you've been asked about Brady a, a little bit before, but just as a young guy yep. trying to figure it out yeah. as a pro, how do you manage probably the expectations he has on himself? Sure. Yeah, that, that's a great question because... Um, you know, he finished college career at Carolina at the Final Four, like the pinnacle of collegiate athletics. Uh, and he played at a very high level in that atmosphere. Uh, now transferring to the professional level, um, you know, it, it's an adjustment for anyone, let alone Brady Manick. Um, so uh, the kid has a great work ethic. He brings it every day. Um, so at some stage, he will figure it out. It just as a bet on this team. How have you seen him? Obviously the attitude sounds like it's great, but um, sometimes he does look like maybe he's pressing or he looks like he's disappointed I guess in, in the way he's playing. Well, I think he has such high expectations of himself um, and he, he performs day in, day out of practice. Um, as J.A. said, he's got a great work ethic. I think it's probably unfair of me. I think I think he's older than he is. Um, I forget that he's a first year player. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with J.A. I think he's going to figure it out. As I said, he he performs. I mean, I go up against him each day at practice, and he performs um, super well. So, you know, I believe in him. I know Jr. does. So, um, I think one day he's yeah, he's he's going to get it. Um, he's, he shows flashes of it at practice. John, does the decision to bring him off the bench tonight just a chance to kind of let him see how the game flows a bit more and coming to the game from a different setting than he normally would? Yeah, like a, you know, my own approach is, as the coach, I'm like, how can I help him uh, get himself in a rhythm? Uh, you know, he, he, when he first went to Carolina, he did the same thing, and then he went gangbusters at the end of the season when he got back in the starting rotation. So, uh, let him let him see the game. Uh, you know, uh, with the second unit, he can be more aggressive offensively as well. So, um, you know, I got to do my job and try and help him out. Um, we've seen Bryce struggle offensively in the second half of games a number of times this season, and happen again tonight. Um, what do you?
you put that down to? And I guess how does the team need to help him get better looks and I guess support him offensively? Yeah. <laughs> well, when when you're taking it out of the net and uh, the, the teams that we've played recently get to pick him up 94 feet and give him a lot of attention, uh, that's tough. So if we can take the ball less out of the net and get out in transition, that'll be very favorable for Bryce. And that'll help him and his teammates will help him. Um, so uh, what I would say is, like, if we get back to the defense, like, if we resolve that, our offense will take care of itself and it will certainly impact Bryce's impact on the game even more than what he's having already. Jesse, you've been part of some great defensive teams in Perth over the years. What do you think this team is lacking on that end at the moment that this award's just not clicking for you guys? Look, I think it's, <clears throat> I don't think it's one thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say it's one thing. It's a... It's a little bit of everything, isn't it? Um, you know, we'll do a great job on the scout and they'll get no board. Um, the next possession will make miss up on the scout. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's different things every time and that's the frustrating thing. Um, you know, it's about putting them all together and as I said, this is a well-scouted league. Um, everyone kind of knows each other pretty well. I think that's, that's uh, understood. So it's about knowing the scout, it's knowing who you're guarding, um, it's knowing what they want to do. It's rebounding, um, it's physicality. I mean, there's, I could go through a, a whole list. It's just doing them every single possession, every single time. Um, and you know what? Sometimes you may lose. Sometimes they may hit a tough shot. Um, then you, you get out of the net, you go down and have a good offensive possession, and you come down, you do the same thing, hopefully defensively. Um, you play the percentages, but I don't think we're consistent enough and, and doing what we need to do every single possession. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Any final questions?